I haven't used this in a while, so we'll see if uh, I'm doing it correctly. Okay, here we go. Um, let me jump over to Facebook and make sure this started. All right, hey guys, hopefully this is working. Um, I haven't used this software in a while, so uh, we're gonna see what happens. But basically, um, I had a bunch of makers ask me about, you know, we did a video on designing a knife, we did a fixed blade and a folder, uh, which is considered the CAD part of Fusion, the design part. Hey Charles. And um, I had a bunch of guys ask me about Oh, Thomas, I'm recording this on QuickTime, and I'll upload it to YouTube, brother. Um, so I had a lot of guys ask me about the CAM part, which is basically uh, programming the machining aspect of it. So I'm going to start out from scratch. I'm going to show you how I do my personal fixtures and work holding, and then we'll get into tool paths and uh, all that jazz. But yeah, I am recording this in QuickTime, so I will upload it to YouTube and also... Um, probably to Facebook again, so it's not just a live. So, um, hey Nick, I'm doing this for, you're one of the people I'm doing this for, brother. Yeah, it'll be on YouTube, and I will also uh, post it to Facebook later, so don't worry. But um, if you can watch it, try to watch it and ask questions as I go. If not, um, post, you know, watch it later and message me questions. All right, so here we go. Um, Hopefully you guys should be able to see my fusion screen. Let me uh, just check this real quick. Yikes, look at that. Um, let's see if I can desize this. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully you guys are seeing. Can somebody let me know if you're seeing my white uh, fusion screen, please, if you're on? Hey, Brandon. Yeah, can you guys, I'm gonna minimize this and I'll check the comments in a minute, but let me, let me know, make sure you can see this screen. Um, so yeah, uh, just to mention, me and Daniel Court are doing a deal where I'm going to make some parts for him. And um, unfortunately, this isn't quite at the stage where I can do all the cam. Or that would be perfect because I could kill, kill, <laughs> kill two birds with one stone. Um, so I need to find something we can do. I'll probably just use you know, one of my other models. And then um, just do it that. Actually, I have a new model. I don't know if I have the lock side done. That would be good because I want to take it to Blade Show this year. So let's check it out. Nope. I had a Bowie design that I want to take to Blade Show. Where is it? It's been a while, so I'm not sure where I put it or named it. <laughs> um, okay. Well, you know what? Let me see. I guess I should have prepared better, but for YouTube, I'll just I'll just edit all this crap out. Um, Let's check the Persian, because I don't think I have. Let me see if I have the lock and all set up for this, because if I do, this is perfect, because this is coming up soon that I need to do. And it was named the Xerxes, but somebody else grabbed that name. Shoot, I do not have the lock model. I have the lock bar, but not the cutout. Um, well, I guess... I guess maybe we could do that real quick. 
and I could go ahead and do this one. Anyways, um, I named it the Xerxes, and about a year or two later, I haven't made it yet. Somebody else named theirs the Xerxes, so it is now the Jin, J-I-N-N. -N. And let me check back and make sure you guys can see this. Um, Nick said it's there. Great. Let me see if I missed any questions. Um, okay. Yeah. All right, guys. So, um, so usually what you'll start with, you know, is your not is your knife um, 3D modeled like this. Okay. Um, so then you you have to figure out. Let me save this. Um, you know your fixed string and all that jazz. Let me I just want to measure something real quick. I remember this is a pretty. Actually, I thought it was a big knife, and then five point one seven seven. That's fine. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna lay everything out without cutting this lock bar thing. Um, just for time purposes, but I'll, I'll either revisit that in a different video or whatever. So one thing is when I do model my lock bar, I model it as a second piece, as you guys can see right here. I'll turn it on and off. So the lock bar is a completely separate piece. And I do that to make machining easier, and we'll get into that and I'll show you why. Also, um, I model these chamfers, you know, like to see how they're going to look in the final, you know, design or whatever. But in my machining pieces, like I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this, I don't have those chamfers on it. Um, I turn off the clip. And I'll show you why um, when we get into it. I mean, you can leave those. I just, the way I have it, and I'll go ahead and make this disclaimer. The way I do everything may not even be the correct way, <laughs> but it works for me, and that's the way I learned, taught myself to do it basically. So that's just how it is. If you if you got if you guys or anybody has um, recommendations on how to improve my process, please do not hesitate. That would be awesome. All right, so here's how I do it. I some guys use um, you know some guys use a vise, some guys use a plate. Some guys use a pallet system, all right? I use a vise. What I'm gonna t show you should um, translate to every, you know, the other methods. So um, one thing I do is I'll create a new group first and then I'll title that original. And then I'll create another group and I call it uh, WCS, which is our work offset, but I'm gonna put everything involved with that in here. And then another group, blades, and I'm right-clicking here. Another group, inside. Oh, insider, why not? And then another group, outside. Okay, so, and then usually when I start doing the cam stuff, I will save this as a different, um, I'll usually call it, I normally, well, I'll usually just call it cam, obviously. Um, and what I like to do, and somebody else taught me this, is I delete all my old sketches. Now, they're all still in that other file. They're not in this cam file, because we're going to be doing more sketches. And this is going to take a minute, because it's going to delete a lot of downstream stuff. But all your modeling at this point should technically be done. We might have to do a few little tweaks, and I'll show you what. Um, but I just do that to get rid of, um, you know, so not, if anything gets bumped in the sketch or anything, and that's just my personal deal, guys, um, it doesn't get screwed up. So I make these folders. I had to change that. It's just bugging me inside. Okay, so we have original, which is what we're looking at now. We're going to make duplicates for all this stuff in here. Um... So technically, you could just go ahead and shift select all those, drag it into original. And then, since it's not based on sketches either, I usually move it off from where our, uh, our uh, fixture is going to be. I just move it up. 
All right, so I usually base the fixture on, on the origin point here, and you can turn the origin. I'm hoping you guys know basic stuff. You can turn the origin off right here. So uh, create sketch. My fixtures are um, five by seven. So five, tab, seven. All right, and they're three quarters of an inch thick, so you know, just extrude it down. I, I go down instead of up because I like the the you know, zero point to be the actual zero point. All right, so there's our three quarter inch fixture. I'm gonna turn off origins. And then I use, for blades and um, frames, I use four by six inch, what I call, or was taught to call coupons, which are basically rectangular pieces of stainless or titanium. So what I'll do is I'll do the uh, offset function. I've created a sketch off the top and, um, I'll just make that negative 0.5, which will be, if I click on it, see I'm clicking the blue line down here, 6, it'll give you the measurement by 4. So that is our coupon size. Um, and then for the hold downs, I do screws in each corner. You can also, if you have the room, you know, do screws in the middle to help any bowing as well. Um, that's completely up to you. So I do, so yeah, it won't do it off this line sometimes, so I have to go back to here. I think I usually do around negative 0.7, all right? Actually, it might be 0 0.65, maybe 0 0.65. And you can adjust that. And, and also, I use 440 screws. I don't use huge screws. And I use the conical head, you know, so it kind of self-centers, um, so to speak. So 0.11, I use a 35, number 35 drill, which is 0.11 or very close to 0.11. So I go ahead and make my screw holes. Just make sure it's snap into this corner, 0.11. And then um, if you need to adjust, like if you want to go ahead and put your screw heads in there, I know my screw heads are like 0.221. You can go ahead and put those in there just so like when you run programs, if something comes too close, you'll see if it'll shave the screw head off or whatever. You don't have to, and I don't do it. But I do have a lot of programs that get really close, and you'll lose part of your screw head. Um, so once you make sure those are done, you can delete these lines if you want. You don't have to delete these lines. It just makes it a little faster when you're selecting um, these to press pull. So right now I'm just selecting that, and press pull, my stock's always 0.2, and you wanna make sure right here, it says join, you don't want join, you want new body. We covered that in um, making the folder part of it. So you got your holes. I'm gonna rename this uh, four by six, and sometimes I'll put stock. That's our four by six stock. I'm gonna drag that into our WCS folder right here. Um, and then this body, that's our fixture five by seven, and you can call it fixture or five by seven or whatever you want to call it. Um, and let me just throw that in the original. I didn't move it up, but I don't really need it. Okay, so we have our stock, we have our fixture. Um, let me turn off the stock real quick. And here's our sketches. So I also want these holes in the fixture. Um, So we're going to select the holes themselves. And either do press pull or extrude. E is extrude. Extrude gives you better options. I like extrude better, to be honest. Extrude those through. Yeah, we're good. Okay, save it. Save often, guys. Let me check questions super quick. Uh... My WCS isn't how yours is set up and designed. Does that matter in the end? Um, I'm going to show you why I do WCS like I do it. Um, I haven't even modeled what my WCS is, and we'll do that right now. So we're going to edit this sketch. And what I do is I draw a quarter-inch circle right here, 0.25. And then I... 
extrude it. Oops. Uh, point two, which is the thickness of my stock normally. Um, and I'm going to go into why I do this. There's a certain reason I do it this way. And I don't know if there's a better way. Make sure you change the joint. It always gives the joint a new body. Um, but it works for me, and it works really well. So that is your actual WCS. And we'll get into what exactly that is when we get into it. We're in design. Once we get all this stuff done, we'll be going into the manufacturing part, and you'll see how all this stuff comes into play. Okay? So, all right. So here's our stock. Um, I'm going to show you how I do my fixture. So let's... Edit sketch. All right, it doesn't show us our piece, but that's okay. Let's just make a new one so it'll show it. Um, make a new sketch off the top of our fixture. Um, well, let's turn that off. Create a new sketch. All right, so basically what I'm doing here is I'm going to create, I use the uh, two point circle and just go straight up. 0.187. What these holes are for are for 3 16 alignment pins. And the reason I use those is when you put your stock in, you know it's in the right spot. So I put two on the top and I put one on the side here. Like I said, make sure it's straight like this. Or, yeah, as straight as you can. Or it'll like be underneath this, if that makes sense. So basically, I can grab my stock. I have pins in here, and then just run it right up against those pins, and it's perfectly where you want it, basically. And then what I do is, um, if you drag, it'll click. There's the center point, right? And then I, I just create a line here. I'll show you why. And then there's the center point. I just do point two. These are actual hold down what I use is hold downs. There's 10 million ways to do this. And like I said, guys, you can do it however you want. This is just the way I do it. So what I have is, um, I think they're 8 30 seconds or 10 30 second um, screws with actual little hold downs I built to hold this piece of steel down while, while it drills these 440 hold down screws over here. So you, you know, just press pull these through. Um, if that doesn't make sense, um, if you send me a message, I'll show you the hold downs I made. If you, there, you can do it 10 million different ways. Some, some of my friends, you put holes really close and then just use, like, um, I know Nick Swan, he, he uses a plate and it has all these holes in the plate and he uses, um, you know, bolts or screws with large heads. Like if this was threaded you know, it would have a large head on it, which would, you know, you could line it up against. I don't, it, and then that works. I like this because these are precision pins and it's right in there, so it's not off, you know, as far as all this. But technically, that method would work too. There's a million different ways to do it. So that's all our alignment and the hold down for the stock, okay? Now we need to put our pieces in here. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the stock because we don't need it. Um... So we, I usually, when I'm machining something, and I'll tell you why, I start with the inside of the frames. So let's grab, let's see. I'll just try to keep the lock bar by the lock. All this stuff is kind of all over the place. All right, so lock and lock bar. We're going to copy those, Command or Control C and V to copy it, and we can move it, right? Um, I also try to rotate it, you know, so it's somewhat flat, right? So you're not, you don't have, you're making the most of your material, so to speak. And then what I'll do is I'll use right here the point to point move, and I'll just grab the bottom point and select the bottom point on the fixture. So it's, you know, right next to it. And then I'll move this. I should have probably left the stock on so I could get a better idea. But I'll move this to where it's inside the stock, okay, um, at the top. So let's turn our stock back on just to make sure. 
All right, and down here, this is called Visual Styles. It's an it's a app or a, I don't know uh, what it's called. It makes it a little easier. Usually you do it over here. With, I don't even know because display settings. And you have to go here and then under here, blah, blah, blah. But it's called Visual Styles, and it's an add-on. Add that's what it's called. And you can change it super quick like this. I love it. Anyways, so we're inside the stock pretty good. Um, what I like to do, I'm going to hit M to move it. Whoops, wrong piece. We duplicated it. When you duplicated it, it takes it out of the group. These are now inside. Okay? So what I like to do is I like to get it as close to the edge as possible without getting too close because, God forbid, you don't have it right up against here or your piece is a little short, which has happened to me. Um, and there's a third reason we'll get into in a minute. Um, but anyways, I try to get it fairly close to the edge. You know, something like that negative, we'll split the difference. I know 0.25 looks good. And then usually I'll move it over to this edge as close as I can without getting too close to the hole. And that's plenty of room right there. Okay, so there's our inside on our stock. Now, the way I do it is you, when you flip this part, you want it, when you flip it, obviously, to line up perfectly. So here's how I do that. I'll go ahead and I don't need the lock bar, really. Well, I'll go ahead and do it. Go ahead and make a copy of these again, okay? Hit your set pivot and set it to the center. See how it locks right there? That's your center point. So hit the check mark and then rotate it 180. Now when you do that, it's gonna be a little high. You just bring it down 0.2, the thickness of the material and the stock and all that jazz, okay? So now, when you flip this piece, it should line up perfectly. And, and I'll show you how I check that, because you do need to check it, OK? And here's how I check it. I'm going to turn off the stock real quick. Um, some of the hold down holes I use when I'm machining stuff are these pivot holes, OK? So what we're going to do is create a sketch right here and finish sketch and then we'll take this hole press pull or extrude right through this the, the uh, fixture all right and then do the same thing over here create sketch finish sketch and then select that center hole and right through the fixture so there's our hold down right save it I'm gonna check questions super quick make sure I'm not getting too far ahead. Matthew said boring. Shut up, Matt. <laughs> um, let's see. Nick said, if I'm water jetting oversized blanks, would I do the material sketches in design or in manufacturing? There is a way to do your stock in manufacturing, and I will show you that. So give me just a second. Okay. All right. So... I'm going to go ahead and turn that sketch off. See, we're already racking up the sketches again. So yeah, see that those holes are all the way through. All right, so here's how I check it. Turn your stock back on. All right, select your stock and control select your lock pieces. Okay, and then this is just how I do it. I duplicate those. So now we have copies. All right, and I will flip them over just like you're going to do in real life. Flip them over to 180, and you can do the point to point. I usually do it. Actually, I usually do it by the the actual hole here, like corner to corner, like this. And then hit OK. Go to your top view and look at it with the wireframe. If it's off. You're going to see it, you, especially, you know, around these pivots or anything like that. And I'll show you just really quick. I'll take these copies we made. So if it's off, let's just move it off of like just a C here. All right, 0 0.001. 
Okay, enter. So that's point zero zero one. All right. So it's, if it's off, you're going to see this jaggedy. And if you zoom in, you're going to see that point zero zero one that it's off. Okay. So that's why you want to base the two frame sides and the two blades when we get to that point off the center point of the stock. Um, not the fixture necessarily. Everything, if you do it like I do it, everything's going to be centered anyway. But hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to check the question super quick. All right. So now we have it to where when we flip everything, everything's cool. Um, also, we'll go back to the shaded version. We now have the outside of the lock, so we'll throw those in the outside uh, group right here. Um, we just need the show sides. So what we'll do, copy this show side. That's the outside show side. So, um, which is gonna go up here. We also have to, you know what? I didn't make, <laughs> I didn't make note of how much I rotated it, but I think it was about 10 degrees and we'll know real quick. Oh, and I'll teach you a trick how you can match those um, rotations. Luckily, that 10 degrees was spot on. But if you have something weird, you can, um, let's see. Like, let's say we wanted to move this one over, all right? And let's just rotate it a weird, let's say negative four, okay? And let's say we want to move that in there and We'll go ahead and use our point to point thing like this and it's off right so what you want to do is click on free move and then set pivot and you want to set pivot to that point that you move from if that makes sense and hit the green check mark or it's not going to do anything and then you can rotate it and get it to where you want um, you might have to super fine tune it like obviously that's not lined up and it's negative 20. So you can try negative 18, that's not enough, negative 19. And sometimes, and as you can see, it might be 19.5 and that's why I did a weird one because sometimes you'll have to really get in here and screw with it. So 19.2 looks pretty close. You would wanna really get in there though and make sure it is, you know? Um, and make sure, here's another thing, I wasn't exactly down on the top, so that wasn't that wasn't working good anyway. So let's try 19. So anyways, 19 is perfect. But anyways, that's how you would do something like that, which does happen occasionally. Uh, we're gonna hit cancel and where's that show side at? Let's turn it off. Okay, save it. All right, so we have our insides. Uh, well, we have our inside lock and then Let's see, we got our show outside. Let's go ahead and put that in the outside folder. All right, and normally what I do is I would select, well, we just need the show side. So we're gonna control, command, copy that, flip it over, 180. And then when I move stuff, I try to do it point to point based around the pivot. So there's our show inside. And we'll put that in our inside group. Um, so that's it. Now, for this model, you got a lot of space in here. So I would do, unless you like water jetting your pivots and backspacers, I would um, put those in there and machine them out. Unless, obviously, you need a thicker pivot because the pivot is, almost always, unless you're doing a floating one, thicker than the uh, frames. So, you know, if we did these the same size of the frames, it'd have to be a, a floating pivot. So let's copy the clip. Let's see. Might be able to, it'll fit in there somewhere. You just need to make sure you have enough room between components for the size of your rougher and then some Oh, I didn't snap either of those, so they're kind of a little too low. Let's see. So move. Now, if you're gonna like, if you're gonna move something like that, and you don't want to do point to point. You can zoom in like this and kind of move it like this. And sometimes it'll get pretty close, and sometimes you really got to screw with it. 
it's always honestly it's always best to just use point to point for the top so you don't screw anything up so we'll just do that and then readjust I'm just showing you a few different options if you have to do it that way like if you have it in an absolute perfect position and you don't want to F with it okay so that's there backspacer move just point to point that one I'm gonna hit the top over here and free move. And then we'll just put over this over here by itself. Okay. So if we turn our stock back on, all that fits inside the stock, obviously. So save it. Now, um, one important thing I'm gonna turn off the outside. So this is our inside machining parts to machine. Okay. You wanna make sure that the clip, let's turn the clip on is the inside all right so ours is is it is the inside perfect so that's good um let me check questions super quick brandon said that is cool and matt said he's kidding thank you matt thank you brandon okay so um the only thing we need to do we don't have the lock bar right and so if you turn off the inside and outside you know there's your stuff we don't have the lock bar relief um, set up. So let's just do that real quick and I'll show you how I do it. So I know this goes to the end of where I want my lock bar to be. We're gonna create a sketch. I'm gonna show you how I do the cutout for the lock bar. So normally I want a half an inch of flat area around 0.048 to 0.05 thick for my lock relief, okay? So the tool I use is quarter inch um, bull nose with a 0.09 radius. So I say all that to say this: this needs this needs to be basically half an inch plus that 0.09 times two, so 0.1. It basically needs to be 0 0.680. So the way I usually do it is I'll use my, we created a sketch, I'll use my offset and I'll select this. Well, see it selected the whole thing, that's chain select. So you can unselect that, go back and just select this. And then what did I say, 0 0.680, negative 0 0.680. All right, and it's a little off. So you use the extend right here and that would be our lock relief. So, it doesn't have to be that you can do a you can go back in here like this you know you already have your point so you can do a straight line like this um, or however you want to do it um, but so the way I do it is um, you want this part machine over here is going to be gone because of the lock bar cut that we're going to do and you want this half inch area to be flat, but you also want it to come all the way to this edge. So what I'll do is I'll extend this out 0.09 to make up for the curve of the, uh, the tool. And then we'll extend these. Now it won't extend this one. So what we need to do is we actually need to go in here and just like trace that line basically, if that makes sense. I'm gonna extend that. Um, and that should be good. So basically what I do is I make a whole different piece of geometry for my lock relief. Press pull. And I, like I said, I like it 0.05 or 0.048. I'll change it from join to new body. And then, where is that bad boy? Right here. And then I name it lock relief. Okay, and then it's obviously too high. I mean, it, it, the way I machine it, it can stay there, but I just like to move it into position. So you're gonna move it down 0.2, all right? And then you also, let's turn that sketch off. You're also gonna need your cutout. Oh, that's weird, look at that. Oh, here's something for ex, ex, extrude I wanna show you. I wanna get rid of these, they're like a mistake. I wanna extrude to an object, and that object is the top of this. So there you go, boom, gone. Extrude from distance to object, and the, ob the object is the face. All right, so for this clip, 
we want our cutout. And we're going to basically do it the exact same way. We're going to create a sketch. And I like for my cutout to be as close to these as possible. And then, you know, you want to leave a little meat on the end. Okay, so that's basically roughly our cutout. The way I do it is, um, we want the chain selection for this. I want it to come off of this for the exact same reason, because the tool I'm using, it's actually the exact same tool, but I want it to come, I want it to make sure it comes completely off. So that would be roughly half the tool diameter, 0.125. Okay, um, and then to connect it, I'll use the extend function here. Boom, 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 boom. And then I'm gonna get rid of what I don't need because there's a little something else I do just to trick the tool up, but we'll get into all this stuff. All right, so we've got this, and then I'm gonna do extend outside of that. And this is going to be a wall, and I'll show you why. This is all weird. There might be a much better way to do this. So maybe somebody will, will tell me how they do it. Um, we're going to make a copy of this clip real quick because we want a solid one. Uh, that's weird. Maybe I can't do it in Sketch. Anyways, um, let's finish Sketch and do it. All right, so we want to... Oh, it did do it. <laughs> My bad. That's good. Okay, so let's go back in the sketch. So we want one version without, basically we want one version without this cutout and one version with it. So we're going to turn, let's see, this is clip and it's inside. It's weird, it's not showing it. There it is. It's not showing it unless I stop the sketch. Cause, well, because it didn't exist, if that makes sense, uh, before the sketch. Okay, so anyways, um, we'll just have this one, we'll make this one clip, cut out, and usually what I do is just do CO for cut out. All right, and we'll make that visible. And what you want to do is press pull, I usually leave 0.05 for my clips too, negative 0.15, and that'll leave 0.05. So there's our cut out, and then there's our solid clip. So turn both clips off now, and this is going to get a little weird. Um, let's see, actually we want to do the whole thing. We're going to extrude all this down 0.2 and also always new body. I don't know why it defaults to join and I don't know if there's a way to fix that. Then we're going to extrude this down negative 0.15 and this is going to be when we go to the manufacturing, which we're about to do, I promise we're almost there, this is going to be our form, for lack of a better word, for the adaptive clearing for the clip. There is a, probably a better way to do that. And if somebody knows a way to do it with keeping the tool right, because that's the thing, and we'll sh I'll show you right now, please let me know. Okay. Um, oh, I forgot one simple thing. Well... So, on my knives, the heads of the screws are in the show side, and all these are tapped, okay? For hold down purposes, when you're doing the inside, you don't need anything held down because everything's held down here, and I don't go all the way through on the inside. We'll get to that. Um, but super quick, I'm going to make a few holes. Actually, I'm just making one right here. It'll be underneath the click, 0.11. And that's going to be a hold down hole. The other hold down, the other ones that are the through holes for the screws will be the hold down holes for that. And we want to go all the way through everything. And then we'll create a sketch for this. And you only need one, but and we'll do this one too. Oops. Nope. What the heck? Cut. Okay. And then we'll do this one. 
just in case you ever have to put them back on there to do anything. Now the only thing is, this is the inside. Like I said, I don't need a hole for that. So we are going to have to, I turn these sketches off. We're going to have to take this and copy it and flip it so I can make a hole for when they are flipped. So 180. And then point to point. Okay. And then create another sketch. Finish it. And then select this. Turn your sketches on. Select this. And then go right through everything. Okay. So that's all our hold downs. Uh, we also need one for the backspacer and the clip. But we need those, like I said, when we flip it. So. What we need to do is, let's find our clips. So we have two clips and our backspacer for the inside. Let me move that in there. So we need to make copies of all these. And we also need to turn on our stock so we have a center point. So I'm doing con Command or Control CV. You want to put your, pop it to the middle. And Flip 180, okay, and move it down 0.2. All right, so that's our outside clip and locks, which we don't need the cutaway one, but it's in there. All right, so and the lock leaf should also go on the outside. And then what's this body? Oh, that's the clip relief, which name all your stuff. It makes it a little easier. Clip relief. And then save. Save often. Um, they do auto save in Fusion, just so you know, but uh, I think that's the outside lock. We'll just throw it in there. Okay, so um, we do need the holes. Let's turn off the stock. We can minimize and turn off the originals. We're done with that. Turn off the stock. So we need the holes for these bad boys. Let's turn off that sketch. So basically, create a sketch for the backspacer, and then finish, and then extrude these, and then turn off some of these sketches. Create a sketch for the clip. Actually, those holes are going to be a little big because we have the counter bores. So let's undo that. And then we'll turn this off and just grab the smaller ones from the back. Click it, sketch, finish. And then you can select these, all right, and turn your fixture back on and extrude them right through the fixture. All right, so that's our hold down. And we're going to do a tab on the end here. All right, so let's save it. And I think we are ready for the actual cam part. So that's how I set up my fixture. All right. Um, turn off the outside. We're going to do the inside first. So I don't think I'll cover the blade, but the blade's basically the same thing. When you rotate it, you want them to rotate, you know, to where they meet up when you flip it. Although a lot of guys, if you're not doing chamfers on both sides or anything like that, you'll probably just be machining one side of the blade. And I can cover the blade in a different video, especially for guys that are interested in machining their own bevels and stuff. All right, so we've got a setup here. Oh, there's already one in here. We're going to delete that so we can go from scratch with you guys. All right, so right here with setups, you want to right click and new setup. And this dialog window is going to pop up. So, yes, we want to do milling. On orientation, I always do Z and X, the top one. So the Z axis, is up and down, so I always select the corner of the fixture, and the x-axis is across. And then for, I use selected point for the origin, WCS origin. That's our WCS, right? That's our origin. And I'll select the top. Now see how the Z is going down and the X is going this way? If you just click the end of these, it'll flip them around to where they're supposed to be. All right? Now for model, you can open up your model, and we want, this is going to be our setup um, 
for the inside. So we're going to select all our parts for the inside. And then on the next one, and you can do the fixture too if you want. I never do it. Um, but that's how you do it, just like that. And then um, on the second tab is the stock. Now, as you can see, this yellow is the stock, and it's basing it on the models we selected, and it's adding additional material. So this is perfectly fine to do this way. Um, I always model my stock. So I have, let's see. I do it from solid, okay? So our solid is right here under WCS. There, there it is. You can do it the other way, and I do do it that way actually for certain things. Um, but for this, I just model it. It's easier. Okay, so there we go. So this yellow is our stock, and there's our pieces and we have our setup. So what's the first thing we do? Um, the first thing I usually do is, um, well the first thing you have to do is drill your stock out. So you can turn off inside and turn stock back on. And usually my first setup is exactly that. It's stock and that's what I name it. Um, so I'm gonna I'm going to actually go into one of my other folders and bring in my machining ops. It'll just make it a little bit faster so I don't have to hunt for stuff and I can show you guys quicker. So, like, see, I have Orphan, Haas, Cam, and that's interesting. And then frames. So, so for a lot of some stuff, I have blade and frames separate, and that's perfectly all right. Like actually for my orphans, I have separate fixtures for my frames and blades. You don't have to do that. You can have, you can use the same fixture for both. Uh, you, you'll get more life out of them if you have separate ones. Um, or if you have a big enough fixture, if you don't, you know, decide to go with a bigger fixture or use them like a pallet, you know, you can obviously have the blades and frames on the same one. All right, so just for instance, here's my orphan setup. So I have the fixture because we have to machine that. I forgot about that. Then we have our stock, we have the frame in, we have the pry bar, frame out, and then I have a separate one for pivot collars if I have to do those. So what's cool is, like, let's say, you know, you do your first knife and you have all these set up. You can literally shift select them, right click, copy them, bring them right on into your new knife, and paste them in there. Now, obviously, you're going to have to hook everything back up, as I say. And I'll show you what I mean, because we're going to do exactly that. Um, let me close out this orphan file. So once you get one knife down and you're happy with all the tool paths and you do another one, it's, it's, pretty, um, it's pretty easy to copy and paste. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete this stock we did, and I'll show you how to rehook up things in this one. So you're going to right click and edit it, and it's the same thing. It needs your Z axis. It needs your x-axis, it needs your WCS origin, all right, and then flip that around. And then it needs your models again because we just brought it in here. It has no idea what it's doing. And this is just the stock, so technically it just needs this. Now, when you're doing stock, sometimes I will use the um, relative size box right here, but I'll do no additional stock. So that way, it'll show your holes being, you know, whatever you're having done. All right, so for the stock, um, I use the spot op first, all right, and I believe that's under 2D, or no, it might be under drilling. Wait, it is a drilling op, I think, and I just named it spot. So let's take a look. We're going to go to edit, and I have my tool in here. Uh, you'll have to learn how to set up your own tools. There's tons of videos on that on the interwebs. So so you can select same diameter and select one of these holes and it's going to select all four. The important thing is remember I have these clamps here. So you want it to come up and that's on the third tab heights. I have it to where it comes up one inch. See the retract height? One inch. And then I have the tip offset which is how deep I want my, you know, my spot negative .046. This will be different for everybody. 
I actually have a super light one when I spot uh, my detent. And then it's just, I have it as a drilling and wrap it out cycle. All right. So if you go to this, you can kind of see from the side, see this dark blue line? That's the bottom height. That's how deep it's going to go. All right. And then this is the top height, the blue. And then the green is the feed height. And then this one up here is the retract height. And then the one at the very, very top is the clearance height. So if you click OK, that's our spot op. And there's our spot tool. And if you right click and simulate, it'll go through it really, really fast. If you hit this, it'll just go right to the end and stay there. So you can like zoom in and see, you know, hey, I don't want it to um, spot that deep. And you can alter it. And like over here, you can change, you can turn on transparency. You can, if you want to see everything, you can turn the holder off or just shaft. Um, you can also turn off the tool paths. I had them turned off. Um, and you can, there's a lot of stuff you can do in here, but you'll have to kind of research that. All right, so that's spotting. And then I use a number 35 drill for the 440 screws for the through, through hole. And it's the same deal. You just select same diameter if you want to. It doesn't screw you up and I don't know why but when you click this it automatically jumps down here you got to go back up and hit hole face and then that now here's the speeds and feeds um, I've got mine at 9400 rpm well the surface speed is 270 usually titanium is around 250 so it's a little hot I got plunge rate at 14 and then I have chip breaking partial retract so it'll drill down and you know here's the pec depth Point 0.1 is peck depth, accumulated pecking is 0.275. Basically, it'll go down a little, come out, go down a little, come out a little, like that. Um, and that's partial. You can do a deep drilling full retract too if you're going really deep and you want to come all the way out to clear you know, the, the fuzzies or whatever, you can do that. There's boring, there's tapping, there's all kinds of stuff in here. Um, so anyways, that's how I dr drill and tap the stock. And then once that's done, I'll put my screws in, all right, and then I'll take these off and I'll take these alignment pins out, all right, so there's nothing around it that a tool can hit or anything like that. Um, let's look at machining the fixture super quick because you, obviously you're going to have to do that, <laughs> all right? All right, so we've got to select our Z and X again, and then our model is the actual fixture. Whoops, origin, that's the top of this. Actually, the origin on this one is the fixture. That's the top, right? It's not the stock. Mm -hmm. And then the model is the fixture. And on this one, this is another good one to where you can do relative size box, but no additional stock, OK? All right, let me see if there's any questions. I've been babbling on. Um, OK, cool. Tony said it's above his skill set. He's just learning. If that's the case, check out my YouTube. I have some beginner videos on designing knives. This is just jumping in after those, kind of. All right, so, um, so, okay. So the aluminum I use for my stock is a big piece of Mike 6, which is five by, these are five by eight, right? So my the, what I order is five by 16, and I cut it in half with a bandsaw. So it has pretty nice edges, so I always make this side here, the rough bandsaw um, side. And what I do, just for my personal peace of mind, is um, I machine this corner, okay? And that's where this comes in. I have a large half inch end mill and it just comes down and takes the bare minimum off of this corner right here. So you have a machine surface to probe off of. And then there's our probe op. Let me just bring that up. Um, if you're using a probe. And the probe surfaces are this and this. And then you can select the approach and travel, which I want it right here at the corner. And the depth and all that jazz. So what it'll do is it'll come in, machine this corner, and then it'll come in and probe that corner, and then it'll probe the top of the fixture. Let me just 
edit that so you guys get the full effect here. And you just select the top. And um, I use selection points on, but it doesn't need to be. I want it to probe right in the middle. Unless you have a hole in the middle, then you need to use that point and move it off that hole. Okay, so then it's going to probe the top, and then it's going to come in and face it with one of these end mills. But you can use whatever you've got. You can use a large bull nose, whatever. All right? So it's going to come in and face it, which is going to take off. I have it set to, I think, 0 0.005. Nope, 0 0.002. Very small amount. I take a very small amount off. Mike Six is already really flat. Then it's going to probe it again because your top height has changed, right? And then it's going to start spotting and drilling holes. Let me turn off this stock. So what holes do we want to spot and drill? Well, all of them. So this is a really good one where select same diameter comes in really handy. Um, there we go. That should be all of them. And then so we've got 440 screws. So we'll go in. Those should all be the same size. I always make them 0.11. All right. Yeah, that's good. And then we're going to go in with a tap. You know what? I should probably slow down and show you the settings for these, especially the tap. I'm going to select everything, and I'll go back and do this. Then we're going to go in with a, I have it as 0.187. It's actually 1164. It's slightly undersized, and it's for these registration holes, and then I ream it. So it is precision, precision. All right. We'll ream those. And then we drill and tap our 10 32nd holes, and those are the hold downs and the pivot holes. Those are all 10 32nds. And then we tap it. And like I said, I'm going to go back through and show you guys the settings for these. And then I always engrave the name down here, like the gen. And then I usually face it again at the end. And sometimes I'll respot it because it'll have bursts. All right, so let's just go to. Um, Let's go to the first, well, that's the spot. We already covered that. My spindle speed's 1900. It's 187 surface speed. I think I'm going, yeah, only 0.035, which is barely larger than the hole, I found out, for the uh, for that size drill anyway. And um, we're doing a number 39 pre-drill for the 440 um, form threading tab. And I do, actually the 39 is a little smaller than I use in titanium because I want these aluminum threads to be nice and tight. So 200 surface speed, 6 inches a minute. Retract rate's 15. Um, drill tip through the bottom. I do want it to go all the way through the fixture. I don't want stuff to get jammed up in there, and that's 0.03. And then I'm using a chip breaking partial retract again. Pretty much the same settings as before. 0.1 pack, 0.1 minimum pack, accumulated 0.2, chip break 0 0.004. And then for the tap, I've got a 200 surface speed. And the tap isn't that long, so I only have it going down negative 0.5. As you can see, it only goes down half an inch. Because the, the, the tap isn't really long enough to go all the way through. And then tapping is the cycle. It calculates pretty much everything for you um, as long as your, you know, your speed's right. So it's pretty, uh, pretty amazing to watch. I don't tap my titanium. I do that off the machine. But technically I could. I just don't. And then... This 3 16 drilling, we'll just look at the surface speed. I got 175 on the surface speed, and the plunge feed rate's about 11. And then that's also um, drilling the tip through the bottom 0.03. Um, and that's a chip breaking partial retract again, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, accumulated pecking, 0.4. And then for the reamer, It is uh, 40 feet per, per minute. It's slow. Okay. We don't want that super fast. Um, and then breakthrough depth 0.03 again. And then reaming with a feed out. So there's a setting for everything. It's pretty awesome, pretty simple. 
And then for our 1030 second screws, um, kind of the same deal. I'll just look at the surface speeds again. 150 surface speed, 10 inch plunge rate. And then chip breaking again with pretty much the same settings, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, all that jazz. Um, and then 1030 second tap, we got 200 surface speed. And it's only going down 0.625 because it's not long enough to go through the whole thing either. And then tapping again. So yeah, that's it um, for the fixture. So our fixture is done. We set up our stock already. Let's get to the good stuff, the frame in. Um, so we need to set up our setup. <laughs> so we got our Z, we got our X, we got our WCS again, which is 0.2. And we've got our model, which we need all the inside pieces, right? One, two, three, four, five, six of those, actually, yeah. And then we got our stock, which is our 4.6. So, okay. So, any guesses what the first op is? Spotting again. <laughs> we need to turn on, actually, we need to turn on our um, models, obviously. Okay. So, right click, edit. And this is just a, this is a drill up right here. So when you go to make this yourself, you're going to go into drilling, select drill, and it'll pop up. You'll need to put your tool in, but mine's a 187 surface speed and 13 plunge rate. Let's select our hole faces. So what am I going to spot? I'm going to spot everything I'm going to drill. Okay. So I'm going to spot these holes. I'm going to spot these holes, and I okay. This is okay to have select sa the same diameter selected on these. That's perfectly fine. Um, let's actually turn the clip on so we're not getting the clip relief. Mm, more like that. Okay, we'll turn the clip relief on there. Okay, um, it's okay with that. I will show you where you'll run into a problem though. And then the detent, you don't want going as deep like I mentioned. So I have that at point negative. Okay, so my bottom height is set at origin absolute, and this is where I'm going to get into why I do it like I do it. Negative 0 0.005, top height, origin absolute, retract height, origin absolute with 0.2, and then drilling and wrap it out for the, uh, the little drill. Okay. Oh, no fit. Yeah, it's help if we select the hole, right? So you can see, hit OK. Come on, baby. Let me save it. You can see if we select, let's go to wireframe. If we select both these spot ops, like shift select, you can see the height difference, right? And what's really cool is that's the hole for the, you can see that that is not going to go deep enough. You don't want to, you don't want to chamfered edge on that detent hole. You want it nice and sharp. But you can see like here, you get a nice little chamfered edge on that hole. And you can use this to adjust. Like, let's say I don't want that much of an edge on that hole. We'll go in here. Third tab is heights, 0.035. Let's try 0.03. Okay? You can see it right there. You're still going to get a nice little edge. Um, 2.5. Well, see, there you're not going to. So if you don't want a nice little edge on it, you know, go with the, whoops, 0.03. I'll leave it at 0.03, I like that. All right, so that's how you do it. That's how you can adjust it really easily. It's just like that. Like the detail hole could technically be a little deeper, but I have a, a few guys that are like big time machinists and they say they never spot anything because you know it's a CNC and it doesn't really need it. And that may be the case. I just do it out of habit and peace of mind. So the little um, 54 drill I use for my detent hole, we got 135 surface speed and a 14 plunge rate. I'm going to select that hole right here, and we want to drill the tip through the bottom again in standard 0 0.03, and it's a chip break partial retract again. All right, same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all our holes. My 38 drill is the threaded, uh, is the one you want for threads. So uh, like I said, these four holes here, that's backspacer and clip threads. Okay, and then a 35 drill is the through hole for 440. So that's these, and not this one. 
that one shouldn't be on this inside one. I must have put it through when I, uh, let's just go back to design real quick and remove that. Just, yeah, that shouldn't be on that one. I put it through all the bodies when I did it, so that's why that's there. Okay, don't mistakenly, and, and okay, so these went to red again because we changed something, so I just select it, right click generate, it'll regenerate the uh, ops we've already done. All right, so at this point, you can do a right click and simulate, and I cannot stress enough how bad you want to do simulate because, all right, so what are we seeing? Let's go to the end. What are we seeing? Uh, let's turn the tool off. Um, we're not getting these holes. So simulate will save your ass so many times it's not even ridiculous. So these holes are 35. They must be a slightly different size, which is why it Oh, I don't think we did select same diameter. Well, the reason I didn't do select same diameter is because these threaded holes are the same. Now, what you can do is when you do these threaded holes, do them 0.1 or 0.09 or a different diameter. That way, when you go in here, you can do it, select same diameter, and make it a lot quicker, okay? Um, all right, there we go. And you can see how far they're going through. Now, here's why... I'm going to explain real quick why I do the origin absolute thing. So when I get my titanium, I'm going to go back to the design thing. When I get my titanium, um, you know, it's give or take 0 0.003 from surfacing, okay? Usually it's, I found it's almost always between 0 0.0035 and 0 0.0045 or 5, okay? It's very little, but it's not 0.2. So, what I do, this is point two, right? If I mic my titanium and it's point two zero three, I'll go in here and I'll press pull this. I need to change this to new offset. Point zero zero three. All right. So now my origin is the same as my um, stock fitness surfaced stop thickness that's on the machine. That's why, and then you'll have to regenerate these again, obviously. That's why I have everything based off of this height. For instance, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it right now. I, I'm just gonna plug in the uh, drilling for the pivot real quick, all right? But as you can see here, um, you know, the top height is the origin absolute. Bottom height, I have the bottom height is, is the stock bottom. You got to be real careful about that. If for some reason your stock bottom, you know, if you did it some weird way and it's below, you got to keep an eye on that. Um, so there's our reaming. So here's why I do that. Okay, so my stop pin, and I figured this out, is 156 deep, okay? That's how deep it is. That allows me to use a stop pin that I don't have to shorten, and it'll go through, you know, my normal thickness blade plus, you know, the bearing, whatever, and all that. So I'm using adaptive clearing path to clear out most of my stop pin area. And for adaptive, well, the stop's in the way. See, I tried to select it, and it selected the stop. Let me turn this on. It's going to turn that off. Turn the stop off. All right. Go back down. So I use adaptive to clear out most of it. And I'm going to show you real quick. So you, what you do is you select that bottom contour there. Second tab. Oh, let's look at speeds and all. I got it at 250. That's pretty standard for titanium. And cutting rate is 60 because it's adaptive. And it's taking very, very light cuts. I'll show you that in a minute. So bottom height, origin absolute, minus 156. Okay? So since it's based off that, it doesn't matter that these models are 0.2. It's going to take it off this, the 0.203 that my stock is, and take off exactly what I need, negative 0.156. Okay? Doesn't matter how deep it's modeled. Shit, I could put it 0.21 and it would go straight through this thing. But you'd never have to change any of this. It's already set. The only thing you ever have to change if your stock's a different thickness is this little guy right here. That is it. So stock to leave is 0.05, and why do I do that? 
radial. So it's leaving 0 0.005 around the outside. Why do I do that? Because I come back in and let me let this finish. Um, where the heck is it? Did it get deleted? That's weird. Maybe it did. Anyways, I'll try to bring it up here. I go back in and ream it because you want that stop, stop pin to be precision. Okay? I don't know where the hell it went. Oh, here it is. Oh, that's for that. I might have inadvertently deleted it jumping around and stuff. Anyways, we'll duplicate this one and move it underneath here like we're, we want it. Oh, we're going to move that one back up. All right, so it's a different size, but let's look at that. This is a quarter inch reamer. I want my 3 16 reamer. So select, and it's automatically bringing up the hole making right here, and I want my 3 16 slightly 0.1877. Select, and then over here, since we duplicated it, it's not going to be the same. So we want to set this again to origin absolute, and we don't want to drill the tip to the bottom, and we want negative 0.156. So if you're setting it up from scratch, that's how you do it. And then over here, reaming, feed out. So if you go to your front view and select stop pin in your reaming, actually, we didn't, <laughs> we didn't select the geometry. All right, let's do that. That would help. Um, I want to get rid of these and then select these. Okay. All right. So if we look at it now, There we go. You can see it's not hitting the bottom because that's your 0 0.03. Okay? That's your difference. And that's why I use this thing as my origin absolute. Is it right? I don't know. I don't know how other people do it, to be completely honest. This is something I've just figured out for me. Um, and it works. So I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> so our bearing contour, I'm using a 1 8 inch end mill with another 2D adaptive pass and you're selecting again just like on the stop pin this bottom line and it doesn't matter how deep you have it modeled because once again origin absolute negative 0.063 I think the balls and the bearings I use are well I can tell you let me open my calculator I think they're 0725 maybe or 7 eight but anyways I want 0.015 sticking out so that's basically how you know I've calculated this depth most most guys know you know sometimes it's 0.042 or something 0.063 plus 0.015. speech enabled all right so the detail the 0 0.078 ball, thank you computer so 0 0.078 that's that's the size of the balls I that are in my bearings okay so 0 0.063, um, stock to leave, 0 0.005 and 0 0.005 because I like to come in and do a cleanup pass, and optimal load is 0 0.02. So what that means is, I'm going to zoom in when it brings this up. It's, these little lines are 0 0.02 apart. They start in a little tighter, and I have it dropping right in since there's already a hole there. If there wasn't a hole there, you needed to ramp in. And where you change that is on the last tab. Whoops. Oh, crap. Edit. You go to the last tab right here, and I have it plunge. Okay? If you wanted to uh, helix in, you select helix. Okay? There's a lot of good stuff on this. We're going to get to that in a, in a, in a little while on, a, on some other stuff. And then, you know, keep saving it. And then the bearing contour, that's the cleanup pass. And basically, I have it going slower. So I select these. And um, it's the same you know, depth, but there's no, there's no um, stop to leave. It's going exactly where I want. And then, but it's going a lot slower. Instead of 60, it's going to 8. So it leaves a nice finish. And I have the roughing passes. 0.06 so it'll start and then like slowly go in and I also have I don't have it turned on oh yeah I do repeat finishing pass so when it's done it'll do another one 
to make up for deflection and stuff like that. That's really good for finished passes on anything. It's kind of like a spring pass, you know, basically. Um, all right. This is okay. I don't have these modeled, but I'll kind of sh I'll kind of show you. This is a let's see. That's not a T18 contour. What is that? Oh, you know what? That might have been my reamer that I was I lost. It is. <laughs> okay. So anyway, well, I showed you guys how to do that the other way. So I'll just delete that. Um, okay, so frame cutout. What I'm going to do here is I put chamfers on the inside of my frames um, here and here where the flipper is. Um, so what I do is, if you don't do that, there's really no reason, well, yeah, there's really no reason to do this and cut out, what I do is I cut out half of the frame. And I use a rougher, 3 16 rougher, and it goes around the whole edge. You can, you can select the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter, because on the third tab I have Origin Absolute. Well, actually on this one it does matter, I'm sorry, apologies. You want to select... Actually, it doesn't matter. Watch. If I select the bottom, it does, I have it at origin absolute and point, negative 0 0.096, which is roughly halfway through. Okay? And then stock to leave is 0 0.005. I don't want it to go all the way in because we're going to clean it up when we flip it. Now, this is important. Lead in, distance 0.4, and then entry position is nothing, but I am going to select the point closest to the edge, which is roughly right here. So when I hit OK, it's going to look like this. Okay, see it's going to cut halfway through it. And the reason I do it is what happens is the tool's going to come down off the stock, come in, and then start cutting. You can't just plunge right into titanium. <laughs> it is not good for the tool. You can ramp it in, where and what that does is it'll start up here, and it'll slowly go down at an angle until you, it gets to the depth that you want, and then it'll zip around. I shouldn't say zip. It's pretty slow. Like, my slotting is, I think, 9 inches a minute. I got it at 215, 9 inches a minute. And if you wanted to ramp in, you would do it here with ramp. Okay? It just takes longer. And there's a nice little, you know. And if you, do do, if you want to do ramping, which actually I do ramping, on my uh, clip and backspacer, so we'll see that. The ramp speed is slower than the cut speed, usually by like 20% or something. I usually like subtract like two from this to do 20 or whatever. But, you know, it just depends. Um, so that's how we do that. Um, so what I'll do is I'll cut these, and you wanna do your entry position. All right, and then I'll go do in and do the chamfer pockets for the inside. So I have my chamfer tool, it's at 250 surface speed, pretty standard for titanium, and then 12 inches a minute. And what I normally do, and I'll just do it like this. So I selected this, I don't want this, I just want this part here. All right? So what you do is you click it again, close loop, that's what we got. We don't want that, we want to open loop, and then you have to click accept, or it won't do it. I, I don't know how many friggin' times, or you can delete it how many times I've done this and forgot to hit that. So now it's just going to chant for this part. And I have the bottom height is the origin and then you set it with the chant for. So I have 0.09. If this is 0.02, I don't want it going past the middle obviously. So if I do 0.09 on this side and my outsides are 0.09, it'll leave a nice 0.02 in the middle. If you do heavy chamfers on the outside, like if you want to do a heavy 0.125, which I think this one does have, you got to adjust this or you're going to go over. So let's just do 7. Um, and that's going to leave a little, little bit if I do 0.125 on the other side. So 0.07 is a width, 0.02 is the step over, and then two step overs. So when I hit OK, you're going to see it's got three nice equal chamfers. So let's simulate what we've got and you guys can kind of see what's going on. So it's going to come in and spot, drill, got a ring, 
their end pockets, halfway cut through, go in and chamfer. All right, so that's what we got so far. And you can see there's plenty of material left. So, I mean, if I'm gonna do a heavy point one two five over here, which I think I am, plus 70, that's 195, it's gonna leave a very slim little piece here. We might even wanna go like 0 0.06, maybe, or 065. I mean, you don't need a lot, but you don't want it razor thin, obviously. Let's just go 0.065, I like to do it dangerously. And then save it. Okay, so I'm just gonna explain this to you guys real quick. Um, so if the flipper tabs here, and I only want it to come back a little bit, this, this internal chamfer, I will draw these with a sketch. And then I'll have the chamfer tool follow the sketch curves, if that makes sense. Okay? Um, well, you know what? Let's just do it real quick, because I don't want anybody getting confused. And it won't take long. So if this is our original up here, you know, the flipper tab, uh, let's see if I have it closed. Do I have it closed? Let's just, let's just say for shits and gigs, the flipper tab is probably right here somewhere. So we want our chamfer to come out here. So what we do is take your inside, create a sketch, and it's fairly easy. You want maybe, it, you want it to go, it's usually, see it's coming off here, but usually it's around 0.9 I've found, like makes a good, you know, enough to where your finger is not going to hit the back side. And then what I do is let me extend this out a little bit. And then what I do is connect it like this. And then sometimes I'll make a solid, but for the chamfer to follow. And it also makes it easy, you know, for this side, I can just duplicate the solid and then rotate it around the center point, if that makes sense. Um, but let's go back in. Now you can use the exact same chamfer up here to do this one up here. So you'd select it again and then click it again. You want it open, right? Like that. Now here's the trouble. This is going to run the tool inside. <laughs> you don't want that. You just click the arrow. It'll switch it to the outside. Okay. Hit OK. And then we'll check out how that looks great. Okay. So let's just do the frame cutout in this and see how it looks. Our frame cut out and there's our chamfer so when you do the prototype you'll just need to see if this like when you flip it I'm putting my finger up like you can see my finger oh I think you can on the thing but you won't be able to on YouTube I don't know but when you flip it as long as your finger doesn't jam you know like jam to this you want your finger well after you flip it to land you know in the chamfered area not on this area so you might need to extend that back um, after the prototype so anyways, that's how I do the internal chamfers. Um, after that, um, I will do, I think it's this one. Yeah. I will do another one around the perimeter. But it's like way out there. Like the chamfer width is 0.01. And then the stock to leave is 0.09. And I'm going to show you what that does. So it's point, putting it way out here. Why do I do that? Well, when I um, slot it, not every time, but sometimes if the tool's worn, it'll leave a burr. So I put this chamfer in there to go around and clean that burr up just to save time. I mean, half the time anyway, when I pull it off, I'll go to the surface plate because there'll be little bitty burrs, even, even if the tool's new sometimes, but not usually. This just kind of, usually if there's a bad burr, it's going to be from the rougher. So this will just cut down your time on the surface plate, you know, hitting this side real quick before you flip it. Now, last thing is a lock cutout, and I have ruined a knife with this one. So I'm using a very small tool, one and a half millimeter, 6,000 RPM at 10 inches a minute, and you got to be very careful when you're selecting this. You, we're going to use our lock bar here. You're going to select the whole thing, and you're going to click it again for the open thing. And you're just going to select, 
obviously this edge make sure that's it and then hit the green what I do is a extension of 0 0.06 at the beginning and none at the end because I want it to end right where it's supposed to and then I have the bottom height as the model bottom you know which is this obviously and then stock the leave at negative 0.02 so it'll go past the model bottom obviously now here's the thing multiple depths it does 0.02 step downs okay um, and then I have rough file on order by islands that doesn't really matter that much and that's pretty much it this tool even though it's small you'd be surprised how long it lasts um, but one thing that did make mine last longer was starting adding that 0.06 and I'll show you why see it's starting the tool obviously outside the material like it is over here now you will get this is very important I forgot you will get to where when it gets past that halfway frame cutout where it's going to plunge into the stainless or the titanium so the plunge rate is 0.3 ridiculously slow you can even go two it's point, I said 0.3 it's 3.3 you can even go to two on this so when it goes down it's only going down 0.02 it's not going in it's not plunging a lot as you can see but you want that plunge rate really slow you can go to one if you want um, but the biggest thing and I have screwed this up once because I didn't run a simulation is this arrow was like this and it looks like it's right but it's not and it cut the inside right through the detent hole ruined the whole prototype and uh, yeah I was cussing that day so that's our lock cut out let's uh, simulate it and take a look all right so there's our stop I'm gonna slow it down just a little bit all right Bearing pockets, bearing cleanup, halfway through the frames, internal chamfers, then did the outside where it cleaned that up, you can see right there, and then it's going in and doing it all its lock cut out, and you'll see there's the gray, the cut all the way through. All right, so that's the inside. That's it. Now you can do lightning pockets, you know, you'd have to model all that or whatever but that's basically the inside cam for one of my knives uh, let me check questions oh we don't have any perfect I don't know oh man I want a half okay well the other side won't be as long we got two viewers hey guys I don't know who's watching but hi it doesn't tell me at least I don't know how to look and see yeah I don't know okay so Let's do the outside real quick. The outside will not take as long to program. We've got a right click on the frame out, edit. We have to set up our XYZ, Z, X, W, C, S, and then click to bring our Z up like we want. Models, we're done with inside, we want outside. Let's turn inside off, turn outside on, select all these bad boys. Oh, we didn't do our clip and backspacer. Great. Oh, basically, actually, well, select our stock. Let me go back and do the uh, the cutout for the clip. No, I don't have that saved on the. That's okay. Inside. All right. So let me go back to frame in here. So basically, it's a 2D adaptive, um, and I use. I'm going to copy it because I use the same tool I use for the lock relief. Like I mentioned earlier, the bullnose quarter inch, which is T18, I think. Where is it? T15. Copy that. Actually, copy all these because I need them. And then when you copy and paste stuff, it helps if you click this to make this active and then paste it. It's going to paste it all the way at the bottom down here, right here. We can make that the last off, it's not a big deal. So for the adaptive, I've got it at 225 surface speed and the cutting feed rate. Usually a good starting point is the feed per tooth, 0 0.002 or 0 0.001. That's a great starting point. And then you can adjust from there. So what I want is this inside section of this and stock contours. It doesn't really matter, but 
and select that. I have it at 0.048 from the bottom. Okay, so um, it knows where the bottom is, obviously, so it's going to come up 0.048 from that. And then I have my stock to leave at 0.01. Um, and the optimal load is 0.02. So when you hit OK, and, it, and this is Helix for the adaptive, just like the Sopin. So it's going to go in, right? And it's going to clear all this out. And see how it goes right to the edge, almost? That's because I, I added the extra material that it needed here, OK? And then this contour pass, um, is for just to clean up these edges. So this is basically, I can select this one. It's just kind of a cleanup pass when I'm done. Actually, there's, oh, no. Okay, I accidentally selected that, so I'm going to trash can it. I just want this right here. And it doesn't matter, matter that I selected the bottom one here and the top one here, because once again, we just did stock bottom and 0.048. And it's that's why I had the stock to leave, because this is going to come in and clean these corners up like super nice. All right. And it looks like it didn't do it right. Oh, I know why. I don't need that for passes. I had it set up from the uh, the other lock leave. And then the chamfer, what I do is I put a little chamfer right here. Well, just right here. Well, I did the wrong one. Just so when it's coming out of the pocket and point oh, no, it's pretty heavy. I need a point one. So when it's coming out of the pocket. You know, there's already going to be a curve here, but there'll be a chant for here. So it'll have good retention, but it'll still come out of the pocket good. And then the tip, because I leave a tab on the other end, the tip I just do on the grinder because I can literally do it in about 30 seconds. Grinding the angle like this way, you know, for the tip. And then I clean it up, obviously. So let's uh, simulate that and see how it looks. So it's going to come, ramp in, clear out the material. And come in and do its well geez that was fast clean up pass and then as you can see that 0.09 was almost perfect so this is going to be curved and then there's a little nice little chamfer into the thing so that's how I do my clip cutout <clears throat> let's save this all right and I don't do any cutouts on this until we flip it so we'll go to frame out So frame out. All right. So I have a bunch of stuff in here for uh, orphan stuff, grenade patterns and stuff. So for pivot heads, it's kind of the same, exactly the same. Not kind of. It's exactly the same as the bearings. Let me turn these uh, sketches off. If you see the blue, sometimes it makes it hard to select stuff. Okay. And you know, 250 at 60 because it's an adaptive. It's it's rocking, and then I leave again some material because I do a cleanup. All right, so that's the pivot head, um, screw counter bore. These, and then okay, just let me show you again just to drive it home. Origin minus 0.065. Um, I use on this particular model I'm going to use a tie connector, uh, titanium screws, and 0.065 will be perfectly flush because um, these aren't contra, they're flat and they'll get a chamfer. So 0.065 makes them perfectly flush or, or a little bit under. And then um, I have contour to clean up the pivot and the counter bores. That one's 0.065 so that's the counter bore cleanup. And this should be the pivot cleanup. Check it, edit. Should be 
3.042. Yep. So let me see what it is. And then I'm not sure what this one's for. Unless I had two for the unless I had two for each pivot, I guess. Okay, and then now this time, um, when I go through with the frame cutout with the rougher, we're going all the way through. Um, we also need one for these, so let's go ahead and duplicate one of these, and I'll show you how to set that up. That'll be good. Okay, so for the backspacer, after we do this first op, see where it says stop? I have it with run pry because I run the pry bar after that. But when you stop here, you're going to put in your hold downs because it's going to have all these uh, holes done. You're going to put in your 10 30 second screws here, and you're going to put in your 440s here, and that hole right there that we drilled, right? And also, you'll go ahead on this one and put in your holes here. So right here, instead of run pry, I would probably put insert screws or install hold downs or whatever kind of note you want to give yourself okay um, so on this one here's the contours we want and we want it going based on the stop bottom but we want it negative 0.02 where it goes all the way through again and we want it to leave some material because we want to go we want to make a nice finishing pass but this is again nine inches a minute at 215 okay so oh well, that's to cut out this. I wanted to show you how we're going to do um, the backspacer. So since the backspacer is not close to over here, I'm going to show you how to ramp into that. So we'll select the bottom. We'll go to the last tab and do ramp. And you want about two degrees. This is important. It's not set to two degrees, but two degrees is really good. And then I have a 0.05 for the step, 0.5 for the step down and 0.02. That's another thing you want to change for the clearance, and I'll show you why. And then go back and make sure your ramp is 20 degrees, roughly less, so 7. So we're going to hit OK. You're going to see a red spirally deal. There's our ramp. Now we don't need this. It was already set at the uh, extension thing that I showed you before for the cutouts. So we can set that to 0.01 and then 0.01. So it'll look more like this. There we go. I'll drop down and just now on this one we didn't select our now this is a problem. We didn't select our entry points. See that? So it's like plunging right into the middle. So we want to go back to entry positions and select our same points again, right here. And should look good. Yep, that looks good. So that's how we do this one. We'll do this one the same way the clip, except there's going to be one little change we have to do. Um, we have to put a tab in there. Well, when this cuts loose, these two screws will not keep it from rattling around, trust me. <laughs> Ask me how I know. So tab, uh, we, you can do tabs by distance. We're going to do it at a point. We want it right at the end, right here. Boom, just click it. And I have it set to the width is 0.1875, which looks good. Usually the bigger the better, and then 0.046, I mean 0.05 is plenty thick enough. Now here's the problem. Um, the bottom of this is already going to be cut out. Remember? Oh, I, oh, we didn't do that. Shoot. I'll go back and show you, but on the inside, we cut out like we do here, but we cut out all the way down to here before it goes in and does its deal. I'll go back and show you that. So this tab needs to come all the way up, so 0.2, because it's not going to have material underneath it. From that, and I'm and I forgot. I'm sorry, but we'll go back and do that right now. And it's going to be the same type of deal. Um, we want to do a ramp, and just change these back to their defaults, which you can just type in or you can right click, and reset to system default, which is 0.01, which is what I was typing in. Now this 0.02 ramp clearance I was showing you, I'll show you what that is. If you go to the side, well. So they changed something and it's not the same. I think if you put top, like we're going to change top height to point 0.1. They used to do it, and I don't know why, maybe somebody can tell me. This is the ramp clearance height. You don't want to start in the ramp from way up here, especially when the ramp speed is so slow. So they changed it. It used to be like point 0.2 would start it like right here. 
which is where the green is basically. I don't, but they changed it to be based on the top height, and I don't know why. But now you'll see you got this. Um, so let's go back. I'm sorry, I, I screwed that part up. I don't see. I don't do clips and backspacers on my orphans. I do those separately because there's just not enough room. Too damn big. <laughs> All right. So basically, um, we're gonna have to duplicate the frame cutout. Duplicate. And then um, what you want to do? You won't need both of them. You just need the clip. You want that to ramp in. to ramp in all those settings are good but you only want it to go obviously we'll just do uh, stop bottom point 048 okay so there you go so we'll select that and we'll select our um, clip cut out other stuff and I'll simulate it for you real quick so it's gonna go in ramp in cut it out right and then you got plenty of room you know, so it's not hitting, especially when it comes through and does, do, does these. It might hit a little. Yeah, it does. But not not enough to, you know, do anything. You just want to make sure, and I'll go back and check it, but it should already be set up. Let's just go to the end. So that's how it's going to look when it's done. Real nice and smoothed out and all that jazz. So for these things, just to make sure it's not going to screw up the tool, just make sure your ramp on those is set to like two or three. Or your plunge. Sorry. Change those to two. And usually the chamfer can plunge in this shit and not <laughs> screw up, but square headed or round headed tools are a little bit more delicate. Um, and on this one, man, we might run into issues with that because I copied this from the other one. Yeah, you got to be careful for stuff like that. Like when you simulate it, look and see if it's going to hit these corners. And we, we probably should we'll do that right now because that might even hit because that's a half inch chamfer. Just go to the end. Yeah, we got a problem. Houston, right here. And then that's an easy fix because that's the contour. And for some reason, I'll go to the clear view. See, it's zipping across here. We want it to not stay down keep tool down we're gonna turn that's the last tab we're gonna turn that off so see now it goes up and then comes back in but we still need to check it and make sure it's not gonna hit it simulation man it will save your ass big time yeah there we go now we got our corner where we want it everything is good sweet okay let me save it make sure we don't have any questions Nope, we're doing good. We still have, we have zero viewers. That's okay. We're recording this for YouTube. All right, so frame out. Where did we leave? We left at the frame cutout. Okay, so after you, these frame cutouts are done, um, I have a tool break detection, and you do that right here, set up manual NC, and there's a ton of drop downs. There's stop, which we've seen, tool break, all kinds of stuff. Open door, closed door, all kinds of stuff. I don't know what half of them do. I haven't even messed with them. So we do a tool break on the tool seven, which you don't really need because the program stops there and you can look and see if the tool's broken. So remove extra. So all this material around here and the clip and backspacer, we remove. Let's run it so I can show you guys what the tab looks like. So like this will go right to the end. So see, it's going to leave this nice thick tab right here. So what you do is you take these screws out and then just bend it up and down a few times. It'll pop right loose. So that's what it's going to look like. So what we, you'd remove is these screws, obviously, and these screws for the backspacer and clip. And this will all stay in there because we already have our screws in there. So to do the cleanup, I use a six or seven flute uh, quarter inch. And it'll go around and clean up these frames and there's nothing what I have is I have well I have a 0.01 horse the, just the standard lead in and lead out but what I usually try to do is I will try to put it starting in a corner 
because sometimes if if you just let the uh, well, let's, I'll show you. If you if you don't tell it where to go in and out at, it'll go in like on a flat spot like this, and sometimes you'll get a line right here. Now there's a few ways to fix that. One is to do a finish overlap, which will make obviously it'll finish further along than it started, and you can so set that distance. Another two I found is to select change these radiuses to something higher so it's a nice smooth like super long transition but I will do that in conjunction with starting at a corner all right so notice the difference look how much smoother it is in that small one. it'll go in smooth and if you do this something like this at a corner and the larger lead-ins and lead-outs you don't necessarily need to do the overlap okay and then chamfers so here's the thing I don't use the 2d chamfer I use the 2d contour um, I just find it easier in 250 15 inches a minute you can do it slower or faster I just find it for me it works the way I want it to work uh, bottom height is origin absolute again just like the other one um, we're doing okay we got 0 0.09 0 0.01 this is for the orphan on this one I was gonna do a heavier 0.125 chamfer and then roughing passes is fine. That'll be three separate passes. So I don't want the roughing chamfer on the whole, th or the heavy on the whole thing. I want it like here on the spine. And then, so, yep. And then I want it down here. Okay. Gotta fix some of this actually. And then, See, I almost hit OK instead of this. So I want my heavy ones here, and I want, um, and well, actually probably here too. Yeah. And then want somewhat lighter ones, especially in the back. I want a super light one up here, uh, a little bit heavier. So let's see what this is set to. I think it's 04. 03. Yep, that's definitely the one for the back. So just select this and then click it again open and then we need one more so we'll duplicate it duplicate and then edit it it's going to automatically have this one still in there so just x that out and then we want these two up here and i'm going to do probably i'm going to try 0.06 i think Let's see how that looks and you can play around with it so we'll select everything we've done up to this point, right click simulate, go to the end, and look at the movie chamfers. Yeah. Looks good. Now here's something. Notice how you have this little lip right here. That's because the tool's stopping, you know, where you told it to stop, which is right here. So here's how you can fix that. Edit. And we want second tab tangential extension distance. So we have a, a half inch tool. So 0.25 is half. So we'll go 0.26 to get it, make sure it gets past where it needs to be. And now you can see it's going past front and back where it needs to be, which is perfect. That's what we want. I mean, there's no, there's no stock around it right now. I don't like tabs, so I, tr I try to do everything I can not to have tabs. It's showing stock, but all that's gone. But now look, nice, smooth, following the line right off the edge. All right? So that's that. And then, I mean, obviously you do that on both um, pieces. I'm just going to do it on the one for time. Um, oh, that one got screwed up. Look at that. It's doing the whole outside, which doesn't matter. But it's not supposed to be doing that. It's just supposed to be doing these. I don't know. I must not have clicked the little green arrow like I was supposed to. Perfect. There we go. And then the back. And then that. Yep. Okay, cool. All right. And then logo. If you want to engrave your logo, I use the trace function um, with a 0 .020 ball engraving in mill from Lakeshore Carbide. Um... 
see. This is all okay. This this is what we gotta do. The lock relief. That can sometimes be a pain in the ass. So we're gonna. That's the inside. Well, jeez. Lock relief. That's all we need is the lock relief. We can turn this other stuff off. So, and that's another reason. And this is an adaptive with a uh, 0.09 corner radius, quarter inch. So this is the pocket we want, right? We want it to do the inside of the pocket, and we're gonna we want it to do these three edges. All right. Now it's going way out there, so that's where the stock contour comes in. We want to rein it in a little. Hit OK. That's perfect. That's exactly what you want to see right there. So let's look at the setup. We got 225 surface speed. We have a 27 cut rate because it's adaptive. You can go pretty heavy. You can probably get a lot heavier than that, honestly. Stock bottom 0.048. That's I like my. That's about where I like my lock relief. If it's if there's a half an inch of flat space, I like it about 0.048. All right. And then stock. I do have stock to leave because I come back around and I clean up the edges. Um, and I clean up the bottom. Um, with, with the same tool, and I'll show you that in a minute. And then that's basically it. It's set, the ramp type set to helix, but it really it doesn't need a helix thing because this is open. So, and then I have a 2D contour, same tool, same setup, stock bottom 0.048. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to do it. I'll have to see really quick. Um, but this is important. Um, the roughing passes 0.06. You want it to like overlap and take out and make it nice and super smooth. This might not work right because we're gonna see real quick. Yeah, see, uh, this can be. I didn't do it. I don't click. <laughs> I probably didn't click the green arrow. I thought I did. Yeah, that's what you want to see. You want it to start off the part, okay? So I think I have the, okay, tangential extension point one. You want it to start off the part and then come in and do its thing. And then this chamfer is, um, I have it come around the top after it uh, cuts this. Um, There it is. Look at that lock relief. Freaking gorgeous, right? Uh, let's do it again. I'm going to turn the lock bar on so you can see how it, it goes with the lock bar really quick. Uh, lock bar. There it is. Okay. 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 You got to remember, too, this is important to remember. Um, there's going to be a one and a half millimeter gap from here to here. So when you're watching this simulation, see where I set it up? Like I told you, where the flat comes all the way out to the edge, you definitely want to keep that in mind. You do not want this start start curving here because you'll get it won't it won't be a 0.05 relief, and you'll get it'll be harder. Or if that makes sense, you want your you want your half inch flat all the way going all the way back to this thing, like that. If that makes sense. I hope it does. But I always like. I mean, and you know, if you don't like this curve, you can go back in and adjust it and um, regenerate this. But I think that's good for this. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know or anything super specific. Hopefully I didn't forget too much or go too fast or anything like that. But I think it'll give everybody a good idea of um, how it's done, hopefully, and at least uh, give people the questions they need to ask. So that's it. I appreciate it, and um, have a great night, guys.